Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. I got a Xigu G1M. <laughs> Thanks to Jan. Jan, man, you're awesome. He sent me this uh, Xigu G1M, which has, you know, a problem. It's the microphone jack that is broken. And that seems to be common to a lot of uh, G1Ms. So a friend of mine had uh, the same one, and I showed it to you in a video, actually had the same issue. So Jan said, you can fix it, you can keep it. <laughs> and that's absolutely awesome. So uh, because my uh, Minion SDR, it's still under repairs, and I have received no reply from Yuri at uh, QRPverse. So I'm really glad I got this uh, G1M to uh, try to fix and play with. So uh, that will allow me to uh, explore the radio more in depth and of course use it uh, you know, in field operations. So I ordered some jacks. Uh, there were some in the bag. I'm not sure which size I can use. So hopefully I'll be able to fix it this weekend and uh, you, know, you will see uh, operating in this video. <laughs> you do need a hex driver to do this. So I'm going to start by uh, taking off the, uh, the faceplate here. I have to remove, of course, the buttons. And to do that, of course, you just basically uh, pull them out. Oh, a little bit harder on this one, the volume. I'm gonna use some tweezers, leverage. And here it is lifting off slowly. Here we go. Remove the nuts on the potentiometers, being careful not to scratch the uh, faceplate. Just start them and then finish by hand. Right now I just want to see what type of jack is used and if it's the same kind that I have, uh, the spare ones. Always put your hardware in a little box <laughs> so they don't end up on the floor. Us older guys, well not that old, but <laughs> we don't like to pick up stuff on the floor. So, and that's why I use revolvers now. But we won't talk about that. No need to pick up stuff on the floor. All right, let's see what's behind this uh, this faceplate. Okay, uh, yeah. So I wonder what's wrong with this jack. Uh, it's still soldered on. I don't see any uh, anything wrong with it. Not visually, anyway. But oh, this right off uh, of it is not screwed in. It's just held in place by, uh, I guess, the faceplate. Interesting. There is a ribbon cable here. And the soldering uh, appears decent, but it doesn't look to be factory, so that's interesting. Maybe someone tried to fix this before, I'm not quite sure. You know what, I should really plug the mic in and turn it on and see what happens. I did turn it on, but, uh, well, sorry, I'm just not <laughs> very presentable, but I did turn it on, but uh, I didn't plug in the mic and I didn't try to, to transmit, and that's what I should have done first. All right, let's turn it on. I have my uh, watt meter plugged in with a dummy load here. Okay, it's on 40 meters. Of course, there's no antenna plugged in, so we can't hear anything. That's normal. I'm going to press on the microphone. It does trigger. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, there's no power deflection. Um, so nothing's coming out of it and that might be uh, where the uh, the contact is, is bad. So basically it's, the, it's really the microphone jack itself now I'm going to try to speak while I wiggle the cable here. So maybe the problem is in the jack, not inside the radio. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, oh. Okay, nothing's moving. So um, I really should uh, visually inspect the jack inside as well. Uh, you never know, it might not be the uh, the jack in the radio. The jack has a heat shrink here around the wires, so I'm not going to cut that off. I'll just uh, take the microphone, look inside, uh, open it up and see if the contacts inside the microphone are actually connected electrically to uh, the uh, prongs on the jack. Let's see. All right, I have, we have uh, one contact here. The black wire should be ground. Indeed. 
another black wire here yes a white one now we only have three uh, contacts here so not all of them are going to uh, to work but okay that's ground as well there's another one that's the ring green is ground as well and red is tip okay so it's not the microphone Here's an interesting look inside. Uh, we have two boards basically. Uh, we have a logic board here with a processor here. We have um, the speaker here. Uh, the filter board is here down below. And we have the, uh, the power amplifiers, probably those two here, right there. Uh, that uh, of course uh, goes out to the uh, antenna connector somehow. The problem I have is that if I want to um, change the jack, I would have to take the board out of the case. And the thing is that I would have to remove those transistors here. I mean, uh, not really remove them, but uh, unscrew them so that they come out of the case. So same thing for this one. I'm not quite sure I want to do that. I think there's enough space over there for me to uh, to solder. Funny thing is, those transistors here, you see they've been soldered by hand, not by machine, and that's, I guess that's normal. There's a little bit of oxidation there, so that's not good. Maybe they have been replaced, that's possible too. Uh, this one here is hand soldered as well. It's a decent job, but it's not super great. And I wonder why it's there's a little bit of oxidation, maybe because it hasn't been uh, coated, uh, probably, during the manufacturing process. Uh, this was done afterwards, so I would definitely uh, maybe put some uh, some coating, a uh, conformal coating on that. Maybe try to find out what's uh, what's wrong with it, and because it, you know what, it doesn't look damaged, but you never know. I'm going to remove the upper board. Uh, there are two coax connectors here uh, using uh, IPX connectors. Those you have to be really careful to lift up uh, straight up. Otherwise, you can damage the connector, and I'm very familiar with them because they're used on drones. So I'm going to lift, this, lift them straight up. There we go. Here's one. So upper goes to antenna. Shouldn't I <laughs> shouldn't invert those? Straight up. There we go. Okay, so done with the logic board. We we'll take that out, and now what I have left is the uh, what I call the filter board. With the power amplifier um, and of course the microphone jack. The microphone uses a stereo jack so I have a stereo jack of my own here which I'm going to uh, plug in the board and then of course I can check the contacts see if the contacts on the jack are connected to the contacts on the board. So let's see if those three contacts go somewhere. Here's the ground. Yes it's a ring connector. Yep, nothing on that side. And here's the tip. Tip is connected, so that's really bizarre because it doesn't seem to, there doesn't seem to be a problem with that connector either. Although uh, visually, I can see here that maybe I touched the lead of the connector and maybe not the board because uh, there isn't much solder on that pad, right? The last one, well, you probably won't see it, but there isn't much solder on that. It doesn't seem that, you know, well, it could not be making contact. So I'm going to reflow uh, those solder joints here, all of them, and see if that does anything. I think the uh, this side looks uh, looks pretty good. The other side looks a little messy. Maybe because uh, someone tried to solder, solder them with the case on, which is what I'm doing. <laughs> It's soaking up a lot of heat here because uh, I think that's the, uh, that's the ground pad. Sometimes a solder joint might look great visually, but electrically uh, it doesn't make contact. No, it could be a dry joint, uh, which in this case even worse because uh, it's going to make contact temporarily and one day it's just going to fail. Okay, on the other side you probably won't see it, but um, I'm just going to uh, reflow here. And that's a little tricky because of course I have the cases there and really really guys I should I should take this out of the case but sometimes you uh, you remove stuff and you, you can damage something too so 
Uh, that's kind of a, it's a hard decision, but I think I do have enough space if I just squeeze my soldering iron in there, like so. And uh, here I'm on the pad that is uh, suspect. Okay, and that's reflowed nicely. Now it's bright and shiny, it's a little dull before, and that could be because of, uh, it could be lead-free solder, possibly. Okay, bright and shiny. You know, on the uh, logic board here, there are a lot of connectors too, and those pads have barely, barely any solder on them, and no surprise that it uh, they would come off sometimes. So, uh, they might not even make a good contact. So I'm going to uh, uh, reflow all of these solder pads because there's not enough solder on them. And of course, it's, if there is enough mechanical stress on them, they'll just pop out. So I'm going to do that now. And I guess I don't have to show you all that. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, just going to take a few minutes. So I'll see you later. Some of those pads, guys, have no solder on them whatsoever. It's crazy. Uh, they're just basically laying on the board and making contact like that. And, they're, you know, the jack is held in place by a couple solder points, um, especially the ground one, but it's, it's crazy how they did that. Of course, it is done by machine, uh, I'm assuming. Uh, but, you know, a human should go over those joints and, and do exactly what I'm doing. But of course, that's uh, that's adding a lot of cost and it is time consuming. So they're not going to do that. But the, the soldering process or lack thereof is, is the problem here. OK, time to put everything back together. Um, sorry, there isn't much light here. So uh, but uh, I'm just going to plug in the uh, coax connectors again. Again, IPX connector, straight down and press on top. You hear a little click and you shouldn't force because uh, you can bend those connectors so easily. Click, there we go. This is, uh, these connectors are an aberration, guys. <laughs> I don't know who the engineer is who came up with IPX connectors, but he should be hiding in a cave somewhere from reprisals because uh, I'll tell you, that's a nightmare. Of course, how do you make a connector that small? You know, that's the problem. The ribbon cable, uh, very easy. There is a flap here that you uh, prop up. Then you slide the ribbon cable in. Don't see much with my big hands. And then you uh, push the flap down, basically. And that's it, it's attached. Not a very good connection, but those cables are fine as long as uh, you don't play with them. They'll stay in place. All right, so I'm not going to put everything back together, of course, because I need to test first. So I'll plug in back the, uh, the front face here and uh, we'll try the microphone and see if any uh, audio uh, is coming out. I think there has been a, uh, a repair attempt on this board before, maybe uh, from the factory or maybe from someone else. I don't know. Not sure I will succeed on this one, guys. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's weird because it does look fine and... Uh, Looks can be deceiving, of course. I know that, I've been married before. Hopefully I haven't made any shorts. <laughs> we'll know soon enough. Okay, so we have the display here. Oh, no power output. Ah, it's in LSB. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you see, the sound is coming out, though, because, of course, uh, you can see it on the front face. Oh, oh, oh. So the sound is coming from the microphone. I have to uh, look back at the video, see if it was happening before. You know what? I, I really do stupid things sometimes. My wet meter was off. Look at this. Oh, 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 oh. Four and a half watts output, so it does work fine. The question is, was my yeah? I think my wet meter was off before, so um, did I fix this or was it working before? I don't know. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> I rewound the, the video to check if there was any indication on the display of the radio that uh, there was any sound being uh, introduced to the radio, and it wasn't moving. So I did fix it, and it was a solder joint, uh, as I suspected. And uh, 
Probably the, the solder on the uh, the mic jack, of course, uh, it could have been related to uh, one of the uh, the back jacks, but yeah, probably not. But yeah, the solder on on these boards, um, you know, the uh, surface mount solder uh, soldering is really good. Uh, I see no problem with that at all. The the quality of the board seems good. The components, everything, but the soldering on the uh, connectors is is just non-existent. Uh, basically what they do is that uh, the board is warmed up, the solder uh, melts and they, they just put the, those components up laid down, just basically laid down on the pads and that's it. There's just no, uh, no soldering on top of them, there's no nothing, you know, so of course I guess it's easier for them and cheaper to uh, have to, you know, discard the board uh, once in a while than uh, taking more time to, uh, to have a good solder job on the connectors. And that's really too bad because, you know, if it you know, could be a good radio, and I know it's a good radio because people like it, and uh, it seems it seems like you know from what I've seen, it's it it works absolutely great. But those connectors are not uh, solidly uh, at attached, soldered to the board. So of course, you plug in your jack, and you know you do that enough times, and they'll just pop out. And that's of course, you know, there's not enough solder there. There's no solder on top of those pads. So what I did apparently uh, did fix it. Uh, now I have to plug it in and give it a shot. Roger, Roger. Thank you uh, very much for the call. Uh, I didn't see your uh, signal strength, so I'll give you. I'll give it to you the next time. Uh, this is Foxtrot 4 Whiskey Bravo Yankee uh, QTH Antibes in the south of France. Uh, south of France. Uh, over. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a new radio I am testing, so uh, I need to uh, find out the uh, microphone gain. So I haven't uh, found all the settings yet. Uh, it's a Zigu G1M, and I probably uh, am outputting uh, around 5 watts. I'm using a magnetic loop antenna, uh, which seems to work pretty well. So uh, 5.9 in Sweden is excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you are five six here five six uh, very good uh, very good signal very good modulation over. Okay, still um, yes, I'm using probably um, I guess eighty watts something like that, uh, and uh, five elements Yogi pointing your direction. Uh, and uh, what was your station? Is it the uh, is it the one that you have on QSF.com, the PRC three fifty one, or is it something else over? Uh, not today, uh, not today. I'm using a Xigu G1M, G1M Golf 1 mic, QSL. Okay, a Golf 1 mic. Okay. Anyway, girl, I should have told you, maybe someone else wants to talk to you. Nice to hear you anyway, and I uh, heard you recording before, so, and I uh, heard uh, did you play the second time I heard you. 70, have a nice day in France, Southern France. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, excellent. Uh, I'm probably uh, going to be posting that on uh, YouTube, if you don't mind, uh, since it's, uh, it's a new radio I'm testing. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a great day and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll talk again, uh, maybe CW. And uh, so until next time, uh, have a good one. Uh, Foxtrot for Whiskey Bravo Yankee, over. Well, it works, <laughs> excellent. So I will be able to uh, make a, uh, to make a more comprehensive uh, review of, the, of this radio, uh, which should be uh, coming out pretty soon. So as soon as I can get out and uh, do some uh, field operation. Have a good one.